In this example, we're going to give you an overview of the clip art files that are included with vCard. We're going to show you where the files are located and then give you a quick guide on how to import and load the files into the software. vCard comes with over 200 different individual designs and many of these come in multiple styles or variants, all of which can be loaded into the software. In total, there are over 400 files included on the VCARV disk, and the files can be accessed from the DVD itself, or you'll see when you install the software, there's an option also to install the clip art files, which will copy them from the DVD and put them on the hard drive of your PC, which makes them easier to access. And when you do that, the files will be located either in the Documents folder, if you're running Windows 7 or 8, or in older versions of Windows, you'll find them in My Documents. So this is a Windows 7 PC, so to access my Vectric files I need to go into Documents and we can see there's a folder there called Vectric Files. So if I just go in there, you can see that when I installed the software I also chose to install the clip art, documentation and the tutorial files. And if you haven't chosen to install these on your hard drive then you can access these on the installation DVD. Now before we take a look at the clip art, I just want to take a look at the documentation folder for a moment. We'll go in there to vCarv version 8 and then we'll go into the clip art guide. And so this is pretty much a written version of this tutorial and it will give you some information about the files that are included on the disk and will certainly make a useful reference. If we just go to view, go to the page display and put that in two page view so we can see that a little bit better. You can see that we have a contents page. If I move down, we have an overview to the clip art. We've got a guide to the file names. And then we have a guide to the folders so we can see how the clip art has been organized. And if we go down, we then move on into the catalog. And so here we catalog all of the files that are available with the software. So there's lots of different files for you to choose from to work with the software. Now this document can also be found on the website and downloaded even before you purchase the software so you can see it and reference it. It's also useful for you to print that out so you have a document that you can have to hand as sometimes it's easier to browse things when they've been printed off. So let's just go and close that down. I'm going to go back into the Vectric files. We're going to now take a look at the clip art folder. And so we can see that we've got all of our files organized within those subfolders which we saw in that clip art guide. Let's just take a look at the 2D vectors folder. So we can see in here we just have vector data only. We can see that all of these are .crv files and if I wanted to I could just take one of those and just drag that into my session. Let's just minimize that and we can see the vector there. Let's just close that down. So now I want to look at the rest of the clip art which is the v3m files. Now in order for us to use a v3m file we need to create a new session. So if we go into the create new file option it's going to go with a width of 6 height of 6, okay, material thickness 3 eighths of an inch, put the XY position to be in the center and then we'll go ahead and press OK. So now that we've got the session open I could just go ahead and drag and drop V3M files into my workspace or I could go into the modeling tab and then use the import component or 3D model option or I could go into the clip art tab where I can easily view and import clip art that's available on my PC. Now I just want to concentrate on the top half of the clip art tab so we can see here that we have the library browser and we also have local files. Now I've installed the clip art that comes with the software and then in the library browser option here what I've done is use this option here to add a folder and then going into my libraries and my documents and then accessing those vectric files and then going into the clip art folder what I've done is added all of those subfolders in here by just pressing OK on each individual folder. So let's just cancel that. And so now when I select one of these folders you can see that the thumbnails for those clip art files are displayed in the lower half of my clip art tab. And so this makes it easier for me to search and look through the clip art that I've added into my library browser. And then I could just go ahead and look at importing those files. And these will remain a permanent feature within my library folders unless I use the remove folder option. 
And so if I exited this session of the software and come back into that and opened a new session, you'd still see the same folders that you can see right now. So the only way that we could remove them is just by using the remove folder option. Another way is just by searching the local files tab. So in here I'm going to go into my documents, my Vectric files, go into the clip art, we can see those folders there. So this is more of a uh, temporary uh, alternative so you can search through folders without adding them into your library browser. So let's go back into the library browser and look at the animals section here. Our vector art 3D files come in three different formats. So we've got a raised version, so this is the A version. We have a B version, which is sat within a dish. And we have a C version, which is sat within a faux hand carved recess shape. And so what we could do is we could just drag the file in, or we could double click that, and that will put that in the center of the part. I could go to view, turn my windows vertical, and then I could just drag that into the 3D view also. And if we go into the modeling tab, we can see that they've all been added to the component tree, where I could then treat them like normal components, where I could just go ahead and size them, or I could look at rotating them. And I'll just bring this one down to make that a little bit smaller. Let's double click that there, just shrink that down so we can see we've got the three different versions of the same file. So to help me it would help if I add in a zero plane. So let's go to the model option and use this option here to add in a zero plane so we can see the raised version. We can see the B version where that fish is sat within a dish and we can also see this faux hand carved recess version where that fish is sat in a recessed shape. So if I just box select all of those and just delete them for now, I'm also going to delete that zero plane by right mouse clicking on the zero plane and using the delete option. If we go back into the clip art tab, I just want to talk about the panels and shields and the weaves. Now you can see in here we have three variants of the same weave. And so what the difference is, is that they just have a different cross section. For instance, if I take weave 12 one and just drag that in, and take weave 12 2 and drag that in. I'll just move that down a little. I'm just going to move this one up a little. And if we take weave 12 3 and drag that in, we can see in the 3D view and in the 2D view grayscales that we have three different cross sections. And all of these files are detailed in the clip art guide. And so that concludes this overview of the clip art files that are included with VCarve.